All right, so we have our application now that can call um, our web service uh, using REST and bring back a JSON string. And so um, we've coded that up. We used the Spring Initializer to create the project, and then we added code to do that. We've also uh, overloaded the run so that we can uh, overridden the run so that when the Spring application launches, it calls our code, our, com our code here, which is like a console application, or is a console application. So now the problem is, is that what we're getting back is a big long string of JSON. If we run this again, um, we get a big string, and then we have to figure out how to parse that into an object usually. So in Java, we have something called a POJO, or a plain old Java object, P-O-J-O. And the whole point of a POJO is to act as a, um, a template or a structure for data coming back from, uh, well, you can use it for various things, but it's essentially a class that just contains data. It doesn't really contain any methods. So in order for us to utilize this data, we need to turn it into a set of objects that we can use. And what you'll notice about this data, if we look at it this way, this is where it's formatted a little easier, it's an array of objects. And so ideally what we'd like to do is when we make the rest call here, we'd actually like to get back an array of objects. Um, if we were able to do that, then it would make this a lot easier and we wouldn't have to go through our own uh, conversion of JSON into a set of objects. We wouldn't have to parse the JSON. And it turns out that Spring REST and the Spring Framework have the ability to take JSON and turn it into an object or a set of objects, an array of objects, in our, or a list of objects in our case. And so we'll be doing that. We'll do a little example of that. And this is accomplished using um, a technology known as um, Jackson. And Jackson is a popular library that's used to convert JSON into uh, objects and vice versa. And so Spring, the Spring REST template and Spring Framework use, utilizes that. It has a bunch of built-in converters or mappers that will take data coming back. It has ones that will do JSON, it has ones that will do XML, and it'll map those into objects for you. Uh, you also can create your own custom object mappers or have certain behaviors on your mapper, like for example, you may want to always filter out certain uh, values coming back or, or something like that, and you can do all of that with the mapping functions itself. So um, let's go ahead and get started, and what we'll do first is we'll actually create an address label class. So I'm going to right click right here and I'm going to just select new Java class. And we'll call this address label. So this will be the equivalent of one address label. And then I'm going to type a bunch of code here. And because typing all this in is a bit tedious, I'm going to copy and paste it. So wait one moment. I'll be right back. Okay, so this is the code that I pasted in. So essentially what this is is a class that just contains data, as I said before. And it maps, um, you basically annotate the properties with what the JSON property is going to be. And you can find those by looking in the JSON itself. So here's the actual JSON key names or field names. And so we're saying we want customer ID map to... Uh, this customer ID, and these names don't have to be the same, I just made them the same. You'll also notice a bunch of stuff is in red, it doesn't like this import com faster jackson annotation. So let's go fix that first and then we'll move on with this. So let's go over to our palm and we need to add another dependency. That's what we need to do here. So I'm going to copy and paste a dependency and then I'm going to change it. Okay, so this dependency is going to be this, com dot 
faster. XML Jackson Core. And the artifact is going to be Jackson Dash Databind. Okay. And let's make sure we don't have there's a version here we don't care to put in. And hit import changes down here to pick that dependency up. And now you notice that all of our red goes away, all of our errors go away. We've imported com.faster XML Jackson annotation JSON property. That lets us do this annotation. So now we have our plain old Java object right here. And I've made these properties public, and that's so we can access them. Um, so this is a real simplified example. So now let's go ahead and use this in our code. So what you'll notice here on the response entity is we set we said that it was going to be a string and we said string dot with the type of class being returned was a string. That brought back the JSON all as one big string. We're going to change that now to say address label and address label here. Now the problem that we're going to have immediately is the fact that if we look at the JSON coming back, if we try to cast this whole thing as a single address label, that doesn't map properly. It's actually an array of address labels. And so we're going to make this an array like this. Okay. Now if the status is okay, then what we're going to do is go ahead and iterate through this just so you can see that it's working. So we're going to do a for loop here. And we'll give it our response get body. So remember the response is made up of both the status code and the return data. So you can't just say response here. And then it's just a matter of whatever you want to print. And I'll just print out You could go ahead and create a whole address label here. That's, after all, what we are pulling back. So it'll iterate through this, pulling out of the list um, an address label object. And then you can use that. So if I had title plus a space plus address label first name. Plus a space. Sorry, I should be saying concatenate, not plus. Middle name. Concatenate another space on the end. And last name. Okay. Alright, so what, what we've done here then. Move this over a little. What we've done is we've actually changed this so that when our response comes back, it will automatically map into an array of address labels. And then we have iterated through that list and pulled out the values to display them. So I'm going to get rid of the uh, printing out the response because that doesn't make sense anymore. And we will go ahead and run this. And I left out a semicolon, so we'll put that in. And run it again. So it should launch Spring. It should make the, the get request, returning the data back, 
mapping it into our address label array and then it should iterate through the address label array um, and display the title first name, middle initial, last name. You'll see that's exactly what it did there. And if we compare that to our call through Postman over here, you notice we're getting the same data back. And I didn't print all the other data out, but you certainly could do that. So you can see with just a very few lines of code how easy it is to use REST template in Java using the Spring Framework, and Spring Boot helps as well. Uh, we were able to put this program together. It's a very few lines of code, and we've, we've been able to successfully get the data back. So I hope this has been useful for you. Please like these videos if you do like them, and subscribe to the channel. And there'll be more to come, so stay tuned.